Today we will discuss the nausea and vomiting control portion of the enhanced patient recovery protocols. Nausea and vomiting control spans the intra and post-operative time periods and is a very important means of improving patient satisfaction and reducing morbidity. Evidence-based medicine suggests that post-operative nausea increases hospital cost, reduces patient satisfaction, and delays initiation of enteral nutrition. Now this is just nausea, not, not even uh, 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 vomiting. So patients who are nauseous <clears throat> are very unsatisfied and uh, can't be fed as quickly as, as otherwise. As we all know, PONV prophylaxis should be performed depending on the numbers of surgical and patient risk factors. <clears throat> and we know that patient factors include female, sac female sex, non-smokers, patients with a history of motion sickness, Surgical factors include bowel, breast, ENT, surgery. Since we're talking about colorectal operations, all these patients have at least one significant risk factor to start with. PONV prophylaxis should be continued throughout the hospital stay. This should not be something that just is confined to the intraoperative period. And we also know that some very simple uh, methods, including chewing gum, reduce nausea in the immediate postoperative period. Therefore, the recommendations based on the evidence are that if a patient has one risk factor, intraoperatively they will receive ondansetron, 4 milligrams, 15 minutes prior to the end of the operation, which is what we typically do for, all, for most of our patients. If they have two risk factors, we will add dexamethasone, 4 milligrams with induction of anesthesia, ideally at least one to two hours before the end of the case. And if they have three risk factors or more, the following medications could be used, either scopolamine patch, which does have the benefit of, use, of working for 24 hours even though there are side effects associated with that medication, <clears throat> Phenergan, 12.5 milligrams, Benadryl, 25 milligrams, Droperidol, 0 0.625 milligrams, and remember the Beaumont policy regarding Droperidol requires that EKG be monitored for two hours following a dose, and uh, therefore if you give the drug at the beginning of the case, You'll be monitoring the EKG throughout the operation anyway, and you don't have to change anything with regards to your, your uh, monitoring for the, these patients. Or Reglan 10 milligrams, 10 milligrams. And as I mentioned, if you have four risk factors, add another medication from the list above. It's important to, can, to can continue to switch receptor sites and not repeat medications over again. Postoperatively, patients will receive around-the-clock ondansetron prophylaxis, 4 milligrams, Q6 hours. Uh, in other words, it will not be a PRN order, but rather they will receive the medication uh, to avoid uh, nausea troughs. In other words, time periods when patients are nauseous and not treated. And we will also have chewing gum available for nausea treatment. I'm frequently asked what uh, brand of gum or what flavor of gum. The answer is it doesn't really matter. Any gum is considered sham uh, nutrition, and it stimulates bowel motility and reduces nausea. If you have any further questions, please feel free to contact myself. Rebecca Kelly, the ARIS project manager, Dan Zolvasi, or Carol Schmidt. Thank you very much.